Okay, the first problem um, complicates the scheme of velocity, acceleration, etc., by talking about deceleration. Now, deceleration is really not such a bad idea. Um, deceleration means acceleration in the direction opposite motion. So if I'm moving this way, deceleration means acceleration in this direction. But I'm going to do this with absolute values. Now, the definition of average acceleration uh, gives us uh, acceleration is delta V over delta T. And of course, we want to work through the details, start with the definition, uh, average rate of change of velocity with respect to clock time, and work it into this. And then I put absolute value signs around these things. Why would I do that? To avoid the confusion of deceleration. Okay, so we'll worry about the direction of the acceleration and everything uh, a little bit later. But right now, we're going to be able to just say the magnitude of the acceleration is magnitude of delta V divided by the magnitude of delta T. And the problem tells us that um, this ball, and of course I expect that you've read the problem, I'm not going to read it to you here, that the ball has an acceleration of 2.10 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared. Now I say that's a deceleration. Well, it's an acceleration of this magnitude in the direction opposite that of the velocity. Um, so I'm just going to say the magnitude, though, of the acceleration is this. And the magnitude of your time interval, you're usually going to run your time interval forward, so it's going to be positive. But that isn't always the case. So we're, just to be careful, we're going to put absolute value signs here, is 1.85 milliseconds, 0 0.00185 seconds. I think it's given in the statement of the problem is 1.85 times 10 to the negative third seconds. Now, the ball is said to hit the mitt and come to rest in this time interval. So if it comes to rest, its final velocity is zero. So now we know at least the magnitude of the acceleration, the magnitude of delta t, and the final velocity. Now what? Uh, delta v, change in velocity, part of the equation. Now we know this and we know this. The only thing we don't know is delta v. So what is delta v? Well, it's vf minus v naught. So the magnitude of the acceleration being magnitude of delta t divided by magnitude of delta t, did I say that right, magnitude of delta v divided by magnitude of delta t. Uh, magnitude of delta v is going to be a magnitude of the change in velocity, which is vf minus v naught. vf is zero, so that's going to be zero minus v naught inside the absolute value signs, giving us negative v naught inside the absolute value signs, and that's just plain old v naught. And we're dividing that by delta t, and that doesn't change. So the magnitude of the acceleration is magnitude of V naught divided by the magnitude of delta T. We want to know what V naught is. Well, the absolute value of V naught then is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of delta T, which is 2.10 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared, multiplied by 1.85 times 10 to the negative third seconds. It's going to be 3.6 times 10 to the first meters per second, which is then approximately 36 meters per second. Now, if this calculation is done in detail, you would multiply this by this. Now, when you multiply this by this, uh, you're going to get um, a bunch of significant figures. You're going to get a bunch of decimal places, decimal figures, and so forth. It's going to be 36 point something. Or, yeah, uh, probably, yeah, probably will be 36 point something. Um, you're going to have to round that off appropriately. Now. This information is given with three significant figure accuracy, as is this. So the result is going to have to be rounded off to three significant figures in order to be reasonable. Uh, you can multiply these numbers and get a lot of significant, you can get four, five, six, six significant figures, easily six, if, uh, if you had three uh, non-zero figures here and here, uh, in most cases, OK? But most of those figures are not significant. They're meaningless because you only know this information to the three significant figures. So your accurate result, and I, I would not penalize this in most cases, um, but when we're actually trying to 
uh, get the result with a correct amount of significant figures, and there will be cases where we do. You want to keep um, keep in mind the rules when you multiply or divide two numbers with significant figures. The number of significant figures you get in your answer is going to be the least number of significant figures you have in the numbers you multiplied or divided. Uh, in this case, that would be three significant figures. So you'd have 35 point something or 36 point something. You'd have one more significant figure here. You'd have your tenths of a meter per second. But you would not be able to infer hundreds or thousands of meters per second from information with just this many significant figures. Now, uh, if we assume, well, uh, no, I'm going to go on with that in a minute. I uh, started to do that. Okay, so we know the magnitude of V naught. We know this is how fast the ball is going. Now, what's really happening, of course, is the ball comes into the mitt. If this is the positive direction, then the acceleration is in this direction because the ball is going to slow down. So we have an initial velocity in this direction and acceleration in this direction. Um, so the acceleration, in that case, if we regard the direction of velocity as positive, then our initial velocity would be, without the absolute value signs, would be about 36 meters per second. The acceleration would be negative 2.10 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared. Well, we're going to take a look here in just a second at the same problem, um, but we're going to do it in terms of just the concepts of acceleration delta T and VF. And we'll use the fact that we have a deceleration in a slightly different manner.